Oh, the sun. The sun's out. It's been a very gloomy few days, but that's okay. It smells amazing in here. And it's coming right from here. Beautiful orchid. Been in bloom for weeks. How you doing, bite? How you doing, pumpkin? Showing in the cat tree, watching the nature channel. Open this window up and let some fresh air in. Why is it stuck? Oh. Need to get some oil in there. Move that up. Very noisy window. Crack that window open, that's how you call Charlie. He always shows up when that window opens. How you doing, bud? You come over and watch the nature channel. See if, what's going on out there. Some squirrels and birds. Anyways, hey, what's up, gardening friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Just got home from running some errands and, uh, well, this happened. The nursery down the street sells the coconut mix that I like to use and then well, there were other things. They had the Plumbe Metallica Alocasias, which are I'm really probably my favorite Alocasias. I've seen them for sale in a few years, so I got two of those, both the Cordelin Fruticosa Kiwis. Fantastic Cordelins. Actually, I have a few that are starting to come back from last year. I cut them back to the soil on my Adenidia palms, and they're, they're coming back, but they're just so pretty. And all I've seen so far at the nurseries this year are the Red Sisters and some that just don't have as much color, so I wanted to get a few of those. Look at this gorgeous Mandevilla. Apparently we're doing this plant haul right from the back of the car. Get the cat litter out of here. Look at this. Isn't that stunning? I know it just looks yellow, but they start off yellow and then they fade to this fun peachy pink color. Opposite that, they start off this peachy color then fade to the yellow. Either way, they're fun. Look at all the colors on here. This is one of the sun parasols. It's called Apricot. Tag doesn't have much to say on it. You know, something I've noticed about Monrovia's tags this year, uh, at least this is, well, this is only the second plant I've seen, but I also stopped by Ace or True Value and they had some really pretty Pelianthus, some sunflowers. And I was like, I want to get this, but the tag said nothing about how big the plant gets. Okay, it says average size. Okay, I don't, it doesn't really matter because I don't care about the size on a Mandevilla. Like they'll just grow and that's what I want them to do. But with the Helianthus, I was like, what, what, no size? Maybe I just miss it because they're writing it out. So it's like reading a story as opposed to having things just like chunked out right in front of you the way I prefer it. Anyways, that's neither here nor there. And then I got a whole bunch of things that I will probably kill. The goal obviously is to not do that, but me and New Guinea impatience, eh, we don't always do that well together. I'm fine with regular impatience, the Walrianas, and then the sun patients. They grow spectacularly, but the New Guineas, just the regular, non-hybridized mixed ones um and not so much last year i started to give them more sun and they did a lot better so i think that i've just been way too timid about the amount of light that these get it's just in years past with the new guinea impatience when the heat of the summer would kick in if they were getting more than like a couple hours of even filtered morning sunlight they would just wilt and drop and die on me so i figured why not pick up a dozen of them and I'll just see what happens. These are all going to be planted mostly in containers that are going to be on my front porch. It gets really nice light in the morning, like sunrise until, I don't know, one o'clock in the afternoon, if even. It changes throughout the year, right? I think they will do better on my front porch. That's the other thing. When I have had new guineas on my front porch, they've done much better. So I think that that is part of it, just making sure that they get that really bright morning light and then plenty of protection from the heat in the afternoon. But I have three different types here. This one is called Sweetie Pie Cherry. Can we even see that? Yes, we can. Look at those flowers. Aren't they magnificent? They're sparkly, pinkish orange with that lighter whitish color in the middle. They make me really happy. Fun, fun, fun color. And then this right here is called Tropical Peach or something like that. Why am I just making it up? Why don't I just find the tag? Oh, I wasn't making it up. That is the name, Tropical Peach. Pretty, right? A really nice, soft, light pink, coral color that I absolutely love. It's not too loud, it's not too extreme, it's just kind of a calm, tranquil, happy color. It may look more orange on camera than it is in person. I'm not sure, that's hard to tell. And then I grabbed a couple of Alteran Theas, which I, I won't kill these, these are easy to grow, they're fine, these are just for sellers. The variety on this one is called Red Carpet, and you can see lots and lots and lots of fun color there. Alteran Theas are great fillers, they're nice and bushy, sturdy plants. And then this is the Strike Orange New Guinea Impatient. None of the ones that they had of the Strike Orange looked that great, but I've grown these in the past. I planted them last year and they did pretty well. So I figured let's give them another shot. 
I don't know why I prefer these over the electric orange sun patient because the sun impatient is easier to grow. Well, that's not true. I do know why I like them better. The variegation on these, you can't really see it right now, but when it starts to get planted out, the variegation has a lot more reds, orange, and pinks inside of it instead of just being green and yellow. And I think that's why I like it because it's just even more color. And then I grabbed two bags of Coco Loco potty mix. Really like this stuff. It's really great soil. Oh yeah, one other thing. This is this right here, Purple Showers Roya Britanniana. This is a perennial variety. It was sold as an annual, but seven to 10 Roya's generally do okay here. I have a few annual types that I'm planting for what I talked about in last week's vlog. And then this right here, I wanna put in a spot that's gonna be more sheltered and protected where it will come back every year. Okay, that's all. It was always fun to start off a video by doing a little plant haul. And this is just the beginning of the week. There will probably be more. Probably not much more because I'm ready to get started with the planting. I don't really need anything more other than petunias. That's pretty much it. I'm pretty good on my annuals so far. Go ahead and take these around and I want to put these around the windmill palms that go on my front porch. And here's another look at everything in the bright direct sun, which is typically not great for seeing how well things look, but with things that are shiny and metallic-y, it helps see the details, look at the undersides of that foliage. It is so pretty. It's sparkly, sparkly. It's sparkly and silvery, silverish hue. Starts off more mottled like that one and then ends up being more this fun purpley color on the more mature leaves. And this, I don't know if it's going to show as well, but the reason I wanted to get all these, look at how well these colors pair together. That is so pretty. See that, that light pink and then that other pink or orange? I don't know, colors are hard. I love that contrast. And this actually would be a decent pairing because morning sun and afternoon shade. This alocasia, this type's never done well for me when I put it in full sun. A lot of them don't like full sun. This one in particular doesn't always do as well. So this is one where I wanted to get morning light and then probably filtered light in the afternoon. I don't think I want to go full shade in the afternoon though, because when I've done that in the past, they've gotten really wonky and leggy. They didn't appreciate it. The growth on them was pretty weird. Oh, I'm so excited to plant these things. See, the, okay, uh, I got, <laughs> I just told you, got these for the front porch. Not all of them, but a lot of them. But I'm seeing them paired up with this alocasia and, huh. I'm not gonna go get more. They were expensive. There was like $6.50 a piece. What the crap? You know, I could pull off a similar thing with cheaper impatience also, just the regular Walerianos. That would probably be fine. That, that makes more sense to do. Anyways, I need to get these windmill palms ready and prepped. Gonna go find my fertilizers and things, and then I'm gonna start getting those planted up, move around to the front porch. Well, no, I'm not gonna move around to the front porch yet. I don't have water set up out there yet. I have to do a whole thing with the water sometime today and I'm not looking forward to it. That's neither here nor there. This needs to get done though. Need to get those potted up. But this is not actually an emergency. I don't know why I made it seem like it's that important. It's not. This is just what I feel like doing right now. Okay, here's what's going on. I went ahead, got everything put in place and then realized that I did that thing where my eyes were bigger than my planter. And then I was like, I forgot to get a trailer. I don't have to do trailers in my pots. Sometimes if I really like the pot, I don't want something too dramatic that comes over the front. These urns have this nice like pattern on the front there, that little emblem in the middle. It looks cool and I don't want to cover it up, but I still wanted like a hint of purple in there. So I was like, it's okay. I'll just, I'll run to the nursery real quick and I'll just see if I can find a couple of the um, Dark Knight Alyssum Lobularia, these right here. Those, love them, they smell nice. They're near an entryway to the house. So I always like to have some sort of Alyssum in them. I, always usually put them in there at least because the smell you know because they have that lovely fragrance what a nice way to welcome people to your home right and then i figured since i was going to the nursery anyways i may as well get some of the other things that i needed like lantana and then all this there's a few other things happened these were all things that i was planning on getting sometime this year anyways but they they had them so i was like well why not get them now i didn't vlog while i was there because i was trying to do a quick in and out thing so yep See, I was going to plant, I don't really need to talk about this yet, but I wanted to plant Royal Cosmos Lantana in between my son and patients and some other things. And I realized that those aren't going to be coming anytime soon and that I only ordered like two. So that wasn't going to work. So I wanted to find some Lantana that I really liked. And um, I had trouble with that. I had to go to three different nurseries, but I eventually found them and all this too. Those I already know I was getting too. And like I said, I was planning on getting 
everything that I got. So there weren't any impulse purchases except for a couple of colocasias, but I had figured if I could find those, I would be getting them. Got some bamboo and a whole bunch of other stuff. I think it'd be good to go ahead and get the planters done and then maybe go through what I got. If even, I don't know, are we getting tired of plant hauls yet? There they are. There's the alyssum. That's, that's how this all started. It was a good day. All right, so we finally get this started and done. I almost forgot to center this with, there's the emblem, is that in frame? Yeah, I don't have things centered quite right there. So I need to space them out a little bit differently, but that doesn't even matter because first, I need to get some amendments and fertilizers into this container. First off, with planters like these where I end up putting a bunch of annuals in them, I like to remove some of that surface soil and put in some fresh mix and fertilizer. I have this nifty, <laughs> I know it, it looks dumb, I know, but it actually works really well for working the soil out from the sides of the pot. I think this, this is like a couple bucks at Target. It's for digging on the beach. Yes, a shovel. That would also work really well. Oddly enough, I always lose my hand trowels, but things like this, never lose them. No, I'm mostly kidding. I just go in with my fingers, loosen that up, get some of that surface soil out. Gonna toss that over there. Also going to try and get as many of the little helicopter seed things out of here that were up, that fell out from the maple trees. Those are just gonna cause a headache later down the road. Palm gain, which is probably my favorite palm fertilizer. It works really well. I don't measure it. I know I should. Generally, I just like to make sure that there's enough in there that it's not going to get completely utilized by the annuals that I put in here. And I want it down lower so that it can work its way down into the soil further to be around the roots of the palm tree. Kelp meal. This a light sprinkling of that around the base. Good source of nitrogen, helps the plants green up really well. Okay, and then some garden compost, just like two handfuls. Doesn't need to be very much. That's gonna help with water retention. It's gonna help keep things nice and rich. Same thing with the kelp meal. Could add some biotone starter in here, any other type of starter fertilizer as well. That stuff's gotten kind of hard to come by, so I'm saving that for the perennials that are going into the landscaping this year. And I just start popping the plants in. Don't even have to dig their holes out very far because I already removed some of that old soil. So they should really just kind of sit right down in there. I just, I don't want to bury the base of that palm very much though. I very much, I mean, at all. Don't want to bury the base of that palm at all. So this all needs to be level. Can stick up a smidge, that's okay. And then here's where I start debating, do I want to alternate them or do two peach in the back with two pink in the front? Two of these in the front and those in the back. I think that would look better than alternating them. Although I would want this, this has more of a white characteristic to it. So I want that in the back. So, so just swap those out, that was easy. A slight height difference between the two, but that's okay. They'll catch up with each other. Tuck away those tags so I don't forget what those are. <laughs> Apparently, there are still lots of those helicopter seedlings up inside the foliage. Those are falling down everywhere now. Canary wing begonia in the back. Do one on both sides. Their growth has gotten, you can see it's gotten a little bit wonky because the pots kept getting knocked over, but that's okay. They will straighten out, and right here is where I'm keeping the tags. So. If I get asked later on what's in here, I can remember them by name. Cause the, I mean, I'll remember the canary wings, but these impatiens, I highly doubt I'll remember those names. And still have plenty of room here in the front for this dark night lobularia, which could look better, but that's all right. It'll fill out. Just needs a little time, no big deal. And there we go. I still need to backfill it and water everything. And but I mean, this is, you get the general idea here, right? The impatiens are planted a little bit close together. Since they're annuals, I don't worry as much about spacing. Can always give them a cutback if they get too close. This New Guinea, I don't think I mentioned. The tag for these says they only get about eight to 12 inches wide and high. So they're a smaller New Guinea impatient. So that's why I'm not that concerned about them growing together. But again, I probably could have gotten a little bit further back. But if I had gone much further back, I would have definitely wanted to alternate them because then it would look like they were going in a circular pattern around the pot. I'm not even positive that I like it like this. I still am on the fence about whether I should have alternated them, but I think that, no, I think this is good. I always alternate them. Like whether I'm using regular impatience, no matter what I'm doing in these pots that go on my front porch, they always end up going from one to another to another. To, ah, I just want to try something different. So there we go. Something different. Yay. We don't have much time left, Toby. We don't have much time. I keep checking that radar. I don't think y'all know. I've been like rushing around out here because we're supposed to have some big storms moving in. 
and then it is supposed to rain off and on potentially a week so the time I have tonight is like kind of it that's all I have time for this week at least for right now because I still need to get things done so that there can be a video on Wednesday and it's supposed to rain so I don't know what to do but that's okay I'm just going with it I already got one of the sable miners over here somewhat planted I dug the hole out and then realized I should like talk about what I'm doing over here not in too much length because in last weekend's vlog this is like the majority of what I talked about so if you want about the planning and all that stuff you can check that video out but I just figured I should at least be like hey look here's a before and then be able to show an after I feel like I just missed a great opportunity I, when I said that here's a before then I should have come back with an after I was hoping the after would be with the space done but it's starting to drizzle and my drill died I could do the rest by hand but there's still like I don't know 30 things left to get in the ground I don't feel like doing that by hand not when I can quick use an auger and go in and handle that hopefully tomorrow depending on the weather in between the rain we will see I the spacing ended up being a little bit wonky even though I had set them out but I don't really care because the thing is with these sun impatience once they get going and they blend together they look beautiful pretty much no matter what you do so I'm okay with it I was I had originally set them out to go down further this way but I remembered this ginger right here that like big old green stick thing coming up there that gets really really big and whenever I have a sun impatient in front of it they don't get enough light and I didn't want to smother the sable miner the scrub pump seedling that's right there so I was so I just decided to just let this be a drift in the front I was short one orange sun impatient and that's okay it's fine if I stumble upon some more I can get another one and put it right there and that'll look great it's gonna get dark though it's starting to drizzle so I have to pick up later I'm glad got this done looks good good enough for now oh wow that looks really pretty at night time doesn't make a lot of noise because I put a rubber band on here because I just it was a little bit too noisy for my liking I don't know how hard it's going to rain hopefully pretty hard because it's just been like real misty all season and that hasn't been super useful where's my stuff hold on okay so what I was gonna say is that I want to take advantage and go ahead and spread some of this plant tone around in the garden it's like the last thing I want to get done I'm having one of those moments where I just feel like I didn't accomplish enough today which kind of ridiculous because I did an awful lot where's my I'm not anywhere near the camera so hopefully we're trying to turn this light on not even near the camera there we go yeah when there's going to be hard rain I just sprinkle that in there the nice thing about if we have heavy rain that will do the trick and wash this down under that mulch and around the plants help enrich the soil I'm using an awful lot of it and trying to not be too noisy because that's probably horrible on my mic I'm so sorry just taking handfuls scattering it around it's just useful to let nature go ahead and do the whole entire work this into the soil thing for you this isn't the most efficient way to do it but it works ginger's coming up back here that's exciting there that's good really wanted to get that done the thing is I was already like feeling totally disgusting from messing with earthworm castings and kelp meal and compost and it's pretty warm it's like 86 degrees at one point today so I just feel gross and I was like I'm gonna go take a shower here in just a minute may as well get that plant tone scattered around the garden I usually like to work some compost and stuff and also but I can do that another time I use biotone starter in the holes with those palms and uh, mix that in also use some palm gain to put in there and then they're just like the handfuls of some compost blended in with the composted garden swell that is and I blended that in with the soil that was already there filled everything back in I really like making sure that the soil is as rich as possible because the richer you have the soil the more good stuff you have going on down there with the mycorrhiza and like the kelp meal and the earthworm castings essentially just trying to feed and help create an ecosystem that exists around the root zones of the plants and the richer of an ecosystem you have there less you need to fertilize and the healthier the plants are going to be and if I can cut back on fertilizing I'm down that was a large part of why I do all this stuff with my plants that particularly ones that stay in pot for multiple years ponds you know you don't have to repot them very often so I like to make sure to get some of the old soil out top dress them and get some good stuff in there to help keep them fed so that don't have to worry about any nutrient deficiencies especially if you're going to plant up the bases of them with plants that are nutrient hogs the impatients aren't like huge big time plant hog nutrient hogs <laughs> guys it's getting late I'm having trouble talking nothing new there things like sweet potato vines petunias 
coleus, even sometimes they take up a lot of nutrient. And that's all nutrient that the big plant in the center needs too. So that's why all the stuff down in there. Yeah, gonna have to call it for today. Like I said, I just feel like I didn't do a lot, at least not for this video. But I did also film two other videos, at least partially got them filmed. It's been a pretty busy day, I haven't stopped. I had just really been hoping to get this spot done, but that's all right. Still have all week to get that done. Hopefully the weather will behave and it'll be fine. Time of year where you really just can't trust a forecast, so even though it says it's gonna rain off and on all week, who knows? And I'm looking forward to rain. We need it, the pollen. Unbelievable, it's disgusting out here. So having some good rain showers to rinse that out, that'll be nice. That is so pretty. It'd be even prettier if my hand wasn't shaking all over the place. I'm sorry, I shouldn't do that. We'll pick up later. It's time to shower and get cleaned up. Hey, baby girl, good morning. Oh, I'm sorry. Can I disturb your nap? You go from zero to a hundred so fast. So fast, Pumpkin. No kisses, huh? Okay, all right. Oh, going all the way up, all the way up. Pumpkin, look at you, you got so tall. Are you not gonna go all the way up? That doesn't look very comfortable. Get it, Pumpkin. Get it, get that finger. Thanks, Pumpkin. Such a sweetheart, you're so sweet. Oh, it looks like you're just ahead. There we go, that's better. Not feeling too camera shy this morning. That's nice, Pumpkin. That was Dahlia's. They need some cleaning up. Sun's out, it's the next day. Well, it's not the next day. It's two days later, because it just rained pretty much all of yesterday. And I spent a good 18 hours working on Wednesday's video. A short, simple video, but the computer just wouldn't behave. Gotta love technology, right? Actually, isn't really the computer's fault. It's a whole ordeal with my graphics driver. I have to maybe just get a new computer. I don't know. But got it done and things seem okay. So, wow, these pumpkins have done a lot of growing since last time I was out here just a couple days ago. I think I'm gonna have to dig those up, aren't I? We got plenty of rain, which is awesome. That's a really great thing about spring or just rain in general. I really like getting things planted right before we're going to have a gloomy day. That's just good timing because that rain and the cool weather, it's more optimal for things if you had to disturb the roots a bunch to get them into the ground. And I mean, I didn't really have to disturb the roots much on these to get them in, but still, I think it's good. It gives them a chance to rest a little bit. It's not as much of a shock to their system. I still need to get the lantana planted up in here. There's only four there. I bought six. There were six in my cart. There's six on my receipt, but there's only four here. I'm wondering if maybe someone took them off my cart while I was inside paying. The nursery that I was at, the, you know, with COVID, everybody's doing things differently. They have like a spot where you leave your cart, someone comes out and like writes you a ticket. And they put all the things on it and then you go inside and pay, you leave your cart outside. And that would be like the only thing I can figure. Cause like I said, they're on my receipt. I'm positive there were six of them. There are actually eight on the receipt, six of the, uh, uh, what are they called, like pink banana or something? Let me look here. Sun isn't going to be the most friendly today for filming, but gonna get things done, that's all right. Sunrise Rose, this was the variety that I decided to go with. They're beautiful flowers, absolutely love them. So I purchased six of them, but there's only four of them here. And then I got two of these Royal Red Zone, Royale, Luscious Royale Red Zone, aren't these beautiful? They're from Proven Winners. And from looking at the tag, you're not gonna be able to see that. From looking at the tag, it looks like these have a normal lantana spread, so it's 12 to 14 inches. And then them being lantanas, that'll probably more like 24 to 30 inches. Lantanas grow very vigorously and aggressively. So four of them really should be just fine, especially because, I mean, there's not that much space here. This is a pretty narrow bed. And if I wanna get all these Tritoscantias in here, then I'd say four is okay. I, it was, was more of an instant gratification sort of thing where I wanted to really just be able to go in and have a whole drift of them or a whole line of them very quickly, but that's, that's not how things worked out and that's okay. Finally getting some action out of the caladium bulbs down here. It only took them like a month. It's been so cool this spring. We've had some really nice warm days, but it, they've been like, you know, maybe a two or three really warm days every couple of weeks. It hasn't been consistent to the point where I'm getting very annoyed and frustrated. The rain's been good. Rain's always a good thing, but as far as just the tropicals go, I mean, they're just sitting there in the garage. I'm sure they'd love to come out, but we still have like five nights in the next 10 day forecast where it's going to be in the mid to lower 40s. I don't want to move them out into 
weather that's that cool. I prefer to move them out into nice warm weather so they can come out and be like, oh, this is so glorious. What a nice change. Not have them sitting in a garage under artificial lighting to moving them outside where it's cool and then being like, oh, why'd you do this to me? That might be some over personification with the plants, but I think it helps make my point. Also, I just noticed there's like a huge gap in here that my finger goes all the way down in there that I didn't get filled back in. Need to do that. Right, it's time to get back to work though. I'm going to get my drill that's all charged up now and start popping holes. Well, I'm gonna do a test hole first and see how saturated this is because if it's too muddy. Although with, if I'm using an auger, maybe that won't be a big deal. I talked about last week how I don't like to plant if the soil's soggy. It's just not a good idea because you can create a bowl and the roots don't always like mesh together with the new soil as well. That shouldn't be as much of an issue in this bed because it's been amended very well. The soil's nice and loose and fluffy, but it's just, I don't know, it's not good practice. You don't want the soil to be absolutely saturated when digging holes. But with the auger, I would think that that shouldn't be a problem, right? I don't know. We come back, there will either be something planted here or we'll be doing something completely different. I'm laughing because my voice just did a ridiculous crack and I repeated myself so you wouldn't hear it. But let's go back to it, wanna hear it? When we come back, there, there will be something planted here. We'll be doing, what's going on there? I don't know, I'll blame allergies. Yeah, finally, this is done. The project that just would never end and very simple too. It took like, I don't know, when you're using an auger, I would say I spent maybe four minutes finishing this up. It was pretty fast. It looks horribly messy though. Still need to come in here and mulch everything. I'm gonna be doing that from this end right here all the way down to that end of that garden bed at one time. So I'm gonna wait until I get more planting done, probably a couple more weeks, and then I'll have mulch delivered, a nice triple blended composted mulch to put on top of everything and um, get some compost down on top of the soil before I even do that. Anyways, I mean, the, it looks good. is isn't the prettiest reveal, but give it a few weeks, it'll look good. I, the Tradescantia is a little closer to the edge than I'd anticipated like having it, but I didn't want the Lantana any closer to the sun and patience. You can see it's pretty close as it is. I want to make sure there's enough room for it to spread. Now, I, I don't have a problem with it spreading in front of the Tradescantia. That's not a big deal at all because it'll be up and over by just a smidge. Just a smidge above it and the Tradescantia will be underneath it and that's okay. They won't choke each other out as long as there's enough space above and below. Does that make any sense? Well, one's gonna be more of a ground cover and one's gonna be more of a little mounted plant. Yes, am I explaining this? I have no idea. Anyways, that's good. It's gonna need more time, but there it is. Now, I forgot that I like tease everybody with a second plant haul. Never even got around to it. So I think that maybe we'll come back to this in the morning though. Everything needs some time to hydrate and it's starting to get late, but I just wanted to make sure to show this off as it is. Maybe it'll look even better in the morning. Probably not. That's kind of fast for a turnaround. Maybe it will though. Who knows? What you doing, Bunky? You get that water pumpkin? You gonna get camera shy again? Okay. It's just the doggy. It's just the dog. You know what that sound is. Why are you being skittish? She's very brave toaster today. This weather, it was very bizarre. It was like a beautiful morning, very sunny, and then all of a sudden it was storming, and then it was sunny, and then it was storming, and then it was hailing, and then it was sunny. It was all over the place, but it ended up being nice out and I went down the street and it was like bone dry. What's going on out there? But you never hid, not one time, not one time from the thunder. She's like, just one day grew out of being terrified of thunderstorms. Don't know how that happened, but I'm okay with it. And I just realized she's out of water. Pardon my sink, I live here, there are things around. Get her some water, get outside, do some plant things. Or look at plants, gloriosum. There's a leaf, hold on. Pumpkin, water's ready. As I was saying, gloriosum. Here's a leaf doing its thing right underneath another leaf. I usually just leave them alone because they seem to figure themselves out. I can do it a little favor there and flip that around. More orchids blooming. Windows looking nice and colorful. Oh, somebody asked me in last weekend's vlog where I got that. It's at my local grocery store. I don't think it has like a label. Melissa, Melissa and Donga design sunny patch. I don't know what that says. Ah, it was just a random thing they had on the shelf at my local grocery store. I think things are dry enough to finally go outside. My hands are full. I shouldn't even be holding the camera right now. Yeah, got pretty windy. Who's mowing their lawn at seven o'clock at night? I have three different neighbors. Not gonna point out which ones, but three of them, their landscaping companies don't show up until like seven or eight o'clock at night. I don't know what that's about. 
Okay, excuse you, Toby. Pick that up. Let's have a look at some plants. I have more planting that I need to do, that I want to do, but looking at this forecast with these cool nights, like I probably shouldn't even have done these. I prefer for things to be nice and warm and toasty when I'm disturbing the roots of the plants. So I don't, I don't know, might be done with planting things for the week, which means it's gonna be a shorter vlog. It is what it is, that's just what's going on. That's life right now, it's okay. Wow, you guys have lots and lots of pollen on your leaves. Lots of pollen. These like actually changed color. They're more green than they're supposed to be. And I'm getting itchy and sniffy just standing next to them. That's okay. Right here, I have two Colocasia Royal Hawaiian Black Corals, which are some of my favorites. I wasn't really able to find these last year, so I had to scoop these up. Their foliage, it's a nice, like really deep, glossy, almost black. Right now it's kind of green. I have noticed there's a lot of variation on these. Like I've seen them at Lowe's over the past couple years, not this year, but last year and the year before, they sold the black coral elephant ears and they were like light green. And I even bought one just to see what happened. I was like, maybe it's not getting enough sun. Stuck it in the sun, stay light green. So I don't know what was going on there, but I don't think there were black corals or they got like a bad batch or something like that. I don't know. They weren't the top shelf of the black coral elephant ears, but these, they had good color on them. So these will look nice, lots of contrast and that the foliage. Ugh, I can't wait for these to grow some more and when things warm up and that foliage gets that nice, dark, shiny black color. They're so fun, really fun. Can't wait for everybody to be able to see those. I don't really know how formal I need to get with this haul because like y'all have already seen everything here. Uh, the thing that's gonna stand out the most is this Amazonica, Clarence, Stramanthi, Clarence, Stramanthi, Clarence, there's four. Four of these wonderful Stramanthes that were, they were like $2. And they don't look half bad. And they look pretty good. There's some crispiness in there, but hey, for a couple bucks, I'm okay with that. Need to drill some new holes in there. We had, like I said, there's a bunch of rain today. And they were pretty thirsty anyways, but look at them. They had multiple shelves full of these, and I went through and tried to pick out the ones that had the most white and pink on them. I talked about that in a video where, where I talked about the Stramanthes, the Trio Stars. If you want really good variegation on them, it's a good idea to get ones that already have it because sometimes they end up being more green, which is fine, but I prefer the ones that have more of the white and pink in them, like this one. See? Not bad, right? Two dollars? I mean, come on. That's a great deal. And there's the last one. I'm going to be using these in some shade planters and some things probably in my front yard and some in the backyard this year. Pretty excited about those. The Amazonica is just an Amazonica. It was also in Clarence and it looked completely fine. There's nothing wrong with this plant. Like, there's some stuff down there, but nothing bad. It's fine. It's perfectly healthy. So I got it. There are two of these beautiful pentas in here and they just say pentas. Don't know what variety. I usually am very picky about the shade of pink when it comes to these. Sometimes it's pretty red and I like these. I was like, that's a nice color. So I went and grabbed two of those. Hummingbirds and butterflies love the pentas. There's the other one. See, very nice, nice and pinky. Great centerpieces for hanging baskets and planters. I grabbed a hibiscus. I already have one of these, but I wanted to get another one because it's one of my favorites. I doubt the label says what it is. It does not say what it is. The, there are two different varieties that have this yellow that goes into an orange and then into a red eye. There are two different names I usually see on them. One of them I think is called Tequila Sunrise. I think I might have that wrong. And the other one is called SEX on the Beach. I'm not going to say it because YouTube demonetizes for everything. And there are probably a, a few others that are very similar and have a similar appearance. They're closing up so it's kind of hard to tell what they look like. But you've probably seen it before because it's a pretty classic hibiscus. This definitely needs to get out of here. Do not want this in sitting water. New lavender, you know, the winter, February. Lost my lavender and my rosemary, so I grabbed a couple more of those. And uh, is that it? No, there's more. It's nice and big too. Look how big this lavender is. The thing that I don't like about these is they, I don't have any idea what variety they are. The cultivar name's not listed for them, but they both did wonderfully for me last winter. And that's a tricky thing for zone six. There are some lavenders that are rated for zone six, but with our like unpredictable winters and fairly wet and hot summers, sometimes it can be hard to find lavenders that do really well. And whatever this one is, it did really well. Same thing with this rosemary. That is until that two week period where it got 
dreadfully cold and that Arctic blast moves through it. Lots of people, lots of plants, so that's cold snap all over the country. And then some more annuals. These are to go around the Adenidia palms, which will be going around the pool here, hopefully in a couple of weeks. These are Supertunia Vista Fuchsia. You can't really see the tag there. Last year I used Supertunia Vista Paradise. And uh, those were really hard to find. I went to so many nurseries and I ended up, I think I had to order them from like Home Depot. I was able to get them online from them. I never found them at a nursery. And uh, then I didn't, I didn't really care for them. They were more red than I prefer. And uh, I like the shade of pink. This more magenta or fuchsia, <laughs> right? That's what they're called. And uh, the thing I really like is the nice deep green foliage. My favorite petunia that I have ever grown was the rose vein serfinia, but they like, I can't find those anymore. It's been a few years. I think someone bought them up to use them for breeding or to market them as their own plant. I think they were originally from Suntory. They were always kind of hard to find in the US anyways. Like they were more available over in the UK and up in Canada because I think they preferred cooler temperatures, but they always did wonderfully for me. They got huge. The Serfinias, I would put them in the palms in these pots and those would come down all the way down the edges and like be crawling across the ground. The biggest, most aggressive growing petunias that I have ever seen. And I wish I could still find them, but I can't. So I figured this is the closest thing I've been able to find. So that's what I'm going to use. I had a bunch of Supertunia Vista bubble gums that I was going to use in there, but I just, I like this better. It's, it's about that green foliage. The Vista bubble gums, they have a lighter green foliage on it, at least whenever I grow them they do, and all the ones that the nurseries do. Maybe that's a local thing, like our air. I don't know, but I'm not crazy about it. I figured I would give this a try and use the Vista bubble gums and other spots. I have lots of spots where I was going to put some more of those anyways. Anyway, not anyways. And then I have here, did I only get two of these? Oh well, shoot, I only have two here of the Supertunia Vista Silverberries. I need four, but I can't find them. I've always just picked those up from like big box stores. Never had trouble finding those, but I'm not seeing them in any of the nurseries. I'm seeing tons of the fuchsias and the magentas and the, of course the bubblegum everywhere. Silverberry? It's just, I don't know, I don't know where it is. I think everybody bought them all. So I was going to try and recreate the like rainbow thing I did with the palms that go in these blue pots. That this is what I did last year. But I don't, I'm not gonna be able to find all those plants. I'm not gonna run around all over the place and like do the panic shopping and buy, like, I'm not, I'm not down for that game. So I'm just gonna use what I can find, which is going to be the fuchsia. And uh, I have two of the silverberries. So I could just do one in each pot. Typically I would do two or three of each color in this pot and in that pot, but I don't have the quantity, so th it's fine. You know, it just is what it is. I would prefer for them to be symmetrical, but it's okay, whatever, right? Okay, now I'm gonna go get the second load. I should have put these somewhere else. Why did I just unload this cart in the middle of the patio? I know I need to get a hose reel. I've been looking. It's hard to find a hose reel for a one inch hose, at least ones that are affordable. <laughs> I just snapped at absolutely nobody. It's been bugging me when I edit the videos and I see the hose out here, so I was just projecting that. My apologies. I, do, I would like to find a hose reel, but man, finding a hose reel for a hundred foot, one inch hose, not easy to do. At least not unless I'm willing to spend like $500 on a hose reel, which I am not. Anyways, back to plants. Nasturtium, look at it. Look at it. Fun variegated nasturtium. Actually, I have some seeds that I, well, I had ordered seeds to plant these and they never showed up. It says that they shipped that was back in like February and I, I don't know. Things were really weird this past winter with shipping, if y'all remember. So I think that it got lost in the mail. So that just is what it is. I had ordered them from a small like mom and pop type seed company and trying to support, you know, support them, right? And I didn't, I wasn't gonna push it. I was like, yeah, it's okay. It was like six bucks and I didn't want to make a deal out of it. So two of those, which is plenty. That's all you need with nasturtiums. Another alocasia. Isn't it pretty? I'm showing you the bottom of the foliage because that's the prettiest part. Similar to the Plum Bay Metallica that I showed at the beginning of the video, but this one is the Yucatan Princess right here. Can you see it under my finger? Yucatan Princess Alocasia. It's just, it's a really pretty Alocasia. These look really nice. Colorful stems, interesting foliage, very pretty. Okay, I got this plant, but I kind of hate it. This is Alocasia mojito, which has become a really popular color casey. I had several people asking me about them, so I was like, fine, I'll go ahead and get one, but I just, they're not my favorite. I don't know why. I remember when these were released. First time I saw them was in a Plant Delights nursery catalog 
long, long, long time ago. I was a teenager or in my early 20s. I remember seeing the pictures of them just being like, ew. I wasn't crazy about it. There was this one and there was one that was called like Midori Sour. And I just, I don't dislike them as much as I used to, but they just, they look messy. But I thought maybe I'll get one, grow it out to maturity, and uh, maybe I'll find a different appreciation for it. Because I can say like looking at the stems in there, Look at that, isn't that pretty? It's slightly out of focus. It's, the camera really doesn't want to focus in on that. They do have really pretty stems. And I know a lot of people absolutely love this one. So give it a try and see what happens. Cause I love the Caladium Frog in a Blender, which has leaves that are very similar to this, but just not quite as like muddied looking. Oh, oh, we will see. Another flat of annuals, set this one down. Not a lot to say with this one. Five lemon coral sedum. A couple more petunias. These are limoncello, so I got these instead of these supertunia honeys, which is what I mix in with those rainbow planters around the pool like I was talking about. I haven't seen the honey anywhere this year, so I'm sure it exists. It's just, you know, people are buying everything up. So I was like, well, I guess the limoncello is going to have to do, which is okay because honestly, the supertunia honey, it kind of sucks. It's really pretty, but every time I've grown them, they don't have the kind of vigor that the other super tunias do. They seem to be much more prone to rotting out when it gets hot and wet outside. And they just, they don't put on quite the same show. When I have them planted on their own, like I would with a Calibrac, they do well. But when I mix them in with the super tunia vistas, not always the same thing. So, I mean, if I end up finding the honeys, then that would be great. But instead I went with the limoncellos, which was a hard one for me to do because I'm iffy with yellow. But we're gonna give it a shot. Gotta try new things. There's also a Raging Cajun Rulia, isn't it fun? These are really fun. The pollinators, hummingbirds, really like these. They have a neat, upright, kind of somewhat like stringy growth, but the flower heads come up high on them. And it's because of that, they like sort of dance in the wind. They just look really neat. Oh, the whole reason there's more plants here is because I went back to pick up more of the lantanas because it was really bugging me that I didn't have the thing going all the way down. So I picked up two more of those sunrise rose. Is that the right one? Did I plant sunrise rose here? Please tell me I did. Okay, good. I was gonna say, cause there's two different roses. There's the sunrise rose and the other one's called like island rose or something like that, I don't remember. And I was almost positive that it was the sunrise. I got the right one, that's all that matters. But when I was at the nursery, I wasn't positive. So as far as this flat right here, this is Super Junior Bordeaux, which is a, I don't think any of them are in flower. This one's kind of got something left on it. It's a purple petunia that has heavy veining in it. Light purple on the outside, dark purple eye with lots of veining. Those also are for those pool planters. So far I have the fuchsia, the yellow, and the purple. And I could just put one silverberry in each one of those. Well, when it's time to plant those up, we'll talk more about that. I was just kind of like trying to find what I could to make them work. This right here, osteo, look at it. Bright lights, pink. It's just, it's a pink osteo. They're fun, easy to grow. They flower and flower and flower. They bury the dead. They like the old flower heads stay on inside there. And they're just, they're nice to have around. They're cute, happy, cheery flowers. There's a banana here. Isn't it cute? You can't even see it. Isn't it cute? The hose. Isn't it cute? <laughs> the little double trunk and a little baby coming up in there. The dwarf Cavendish, they're just cute bananas. There's the Acumenitas. I really like the Rahapuris. Those are really cool looking bananas. And this one is the dwarf Cavendish. And then what's the other one? Little Prince and like Tiny Prince, truly tiny. I love little banana trees. When they get those short, thick trunks on them, they're just cute. Just fun, cute plants to have around. And there's this one. It's a suit. You don't want to focus on that? You're going to have to because I'm not going to try and say that. I will try and say it. Pseudoranthurium black varnish. Isn't that neat? Really great foliage plant. It's like a chocolatey reddish black color. Sun to part sun, 12 to 18 inches high. A nice centerpiece plant can put lots of colorful things around it. I think that'll be nice in the fall too. It's shiny. I have a thing for the shiny plants. I always appreciate having lots of variety with my foliage. And look at that. Got a whole little rainbow of neat leaves going on there. Then I grabbed two of these. These are some of my favorites. Colocasia Maui Gold. Maui Gold. Planted these last year. Absolutely love them. The leaves on these, they're like a nice light chartreuse green and they're really shiny. It's, again, back to the shiny. I love shiny leaves. They're fun, really pretty, and they grow really, really well. I do have some of these in my garage still, but 
I don't know if they made it through the winter because I'd never tried to overwinter the specific one before. Sometimes, especially if they're the Royal Hawaiian types or just super hybridized colocasias and alocasias, it can take them a few years to produce a really nice tuber. So uh, I was a little bit on the fence about how to overwinter them. So I just went ahead and cut them back and I left one of them in the base of one of my Bird of Paradise. Anyways, they're really cool. Hopefully the ones I have survived, but if not, I have a fallback and there's always room for more because I had a spot where I wanted to put these down over there when things get a little bit warmer outside. And then one of the last plants, look at this cupfia. Isn't that a cool cupfia? Pink shimmer. It has this really fun dainty foliage, tiny little dainty flowers, a truly airy nature to it. And it just, something about it just made me happy. I don't typically just get one of something if I'm gonna use them for planters, but with this, I was like, I don't actually, like, I don't know this cupfia. So I figured this will go into its own little pot and like sit on a coffee table or something and I can learn its preferences because it just kind of looks like one that would rot out pretty easily. Does that have aphids on it? No, those aren't aphids, it's just dirt. Pretty though, so beautiful. I love those tiny little flowers and those tiny little leaves. Six hours of sun, 10 to 16 inches tall. Water when dry, top of soil is dry. And a 16 inches tall, that's a decent size for something with such dainty foliage. I like it, so happy and pretty. I never finished my thought with the colocasias here. So I think I'm going to put the bird of paradise in these two blue pots down here this year because the mule palms, which usually go in those pots, they need to be repotted. Like very badly needs to repot. Look at the size of that trunk <laughs> compared to the rest of the pot. Palm trees can stay in the same container for a really long time. What's this doing over here? But I just noticed last year that it was getting pretty difficult to keep these guys hydrated and keep them happy. So it's definitely time to bump them up into something larger. And that's the max size that'll fit in those blue pots. So if they go in something larger, if they're not gonna fit in those pots anymore and they won't be able to frame the edge of the pool or the steps. So I figured I'll put the bird of paradise in those pots this year. It's kind of exposed. So hopefully it's not gonna do too much damage to their foliage. When I do this, hopefully next week or the week after, we'll talk about it more in depth. But that does lead to the last plant because the Bird of Paradise, those usually end up over here. Ignore this drama queen that did not appreciate the snow last week. The, there's still some flexibility in there. It's not dead, but it isn't happy. Typically, I have Bird of Paradise here, Bird of Paradise there, and then a queen palm in the middle or some sort of palm in the center. The bird of paradise, the spot doesn't get the sun that it used to as the trees have grown, so they've been stretching and they like whack you in the face when you walk by. So I was saying last year, I don't know if I'm feeling the bird of paradise over here anymore just because of that. I would like for things to be a little bit more structured, but I want something tall over here for privacy because the yard goes right back over there whenever there's kids playing and just, I just like my privacy back here. So since the bird of paradise are going to go down there, I picked up a couple of very nice bamboos to go in their place. Here's a better look at one of them. Yellow Grove Bamboo. They do reasonably well here. They should be hardy all the way to zone five. I think that's usually what they regard as. Yeah, five through 11. I'm keeping them in pots. I'm not worried about their invasive nature. That's really, I've grown a lot of bamboo. As long as you pull the canes up in the spring when they're still nice and soft, usually you can control it. It's when you ignore it, at least where I live in my climate, it's when you ignore it for several years that it becomes a really big problem. But we can't grow a lot of the varieties up here this far north that are super aggressive. Though the yellow, it's pretty aggressive. But I'm just saying, like, you know, you can plant bamboo. You just gotta do some research on it and be mindful. That's all irrelevant. These are going in pots. They're not like the same appeal as a bird of paradise, but I really like the idea of having something out here that'll be out here all year, all winter long. The yellow bamboos do get kind of brown here during the winter time, so I'll have to spray them and probably cover them up when it gets super cold out, but otherwise it's just going to be nice to not have the empty pots out here in the winter time. Again, we'll talk more on that when I get those potted up. Hopefully next week. I'm still riding out this stupid forecast. <laughs> Magnolia looks so bad. So I'm super excited about these. I had had my eyes on these from the nursery since last summer. And these are the same plants from last year. So they overwintered outside, which is why you can see where the canes are chopped. That's probably damage that was done back in February when we had that cold snap that went on for a couple of weeks and we were below zero. So that's where the old growth was, but I just like them even more. The pots are so full because they've been in these for a couple of years. Usually when I find bamboo at the nurseries, it's a can about this size with like six to 10 sticks in it, if even, and they're like a hundred to $200. So this was, this was a great buy getting two of these at this size. There's a shot at that nice yellow cane in there. I'm not gonna lie, it's not one of my favorites of the bamboos, but it's pretty much all that's sold around here as far as the runners go. I could have put clumpers in there, but they just, I think they look kind of messy. 
they're not really my thing. I wanted something that had really nice, distinct canes on them, like just a regular bamboo. Okay, so there's all that. Lots of fun stuff, lots of new plants, lots of work to get done. I can't wait to be able to do it. It's still gonna be a minute, still waiting things out. You know, if I thought it was gonna be like another month until I could get things going, then I would just do it. But it looks like it should be middle of next week. Things should start to warm up. So I'm just like, okay, I'll just keep waiting. <laughs> it's okay, I've waited this long. Why throw it all away now, right? Why get impatient now? It's only one more week, hopefully. Actually, pretty chilly right now. I don't, I'm not used to this being cold in May thing. It's weird. I don't like it. Might have to move these. Those, <laughs> those Stramanthes are not going to be happy right there. Not one bit. That's going to cook in the morning if there's not overcast. So there, there it is. Lots of plants. Got the bed planted up. Started some pots. Would like to do some more. But like I said, I don't want to go messing with their roots and everything if we're going to have lows in the low 40s. And I'm just, it's what it is, is I'm paranoid, extremely paranoid that they're going to be wrong with this forecast and that it's going to be like in the upper 30s instead of the 40s because it's just, it's been changing. I can't snap with my left hand. It's been changing so drastically every time I look at it. So I'm like, just give it another week. Why not? Got this done. I'm just concerned about these plants because the ground's going to be warm. A lot of what's over here is for containers, which are up and exposed. They're not going to have the warmth of the ground around them so one more week no big deal got lots of other stuff to do to get ready for mother's day coming up on sunday happy mother's day tell you mothers out there hope you're doing well and you have a good time doing whatever you're doing things are starting to mature over here the bikini teeny color caseas are actually starting to put up leaves look pretty good even some showing up down here that's eucamus bicolor right there pineapple lily I, don't, I just like forced myself to talk through a yawn. I shouldn't have done that. Done no action from the banana cannas. I don't know if they made it. We'll just have to wait and see. Cannas can take a long time to come up. It's just since the gingers are coming up, I'm like, eh, what's going on? Although I have some gingers over here that haven't come up yet that I think should be alive. So maybe just need to be more patient. It is what it is. If they don't come back, that's fine. There are plenty of other things I can stick in that spot. Anyway, thanks for hanging out. Hope you're doing well. Comment down below. Love talking to y'all. Having a good time in your gardens? Are you being as paranoid as I am? Are you just saying, forget it, let's just get planting? That's typically what I would do. I just, I don't know. I'm trying to like control myself a little bit there. Whoa, crinum lilies filling out very nicely. One of the great things about spring is it's like every single day you can come out in the garden and the things are just vastly different from the day before. I don't know about vastly, but this is like this area right here. That's that doesn't count because I just planted it up, but you know what I mean. Yeah, like I said, comment down below. I love talking to everybody. Hey, tips, tricks, suggestions with the new guineas. I appreciate it. Let me know what you do and what your struggles are. Maybe we can nerd out, get our plant nerd on together and maybe troubleshoot that one a little bit, see if we can figure it out. As I mentioned though, I think I just haven't been giving them enough sun and been really just over babying them. And I've, when I have done well with them, it's when I just kind of left them alone. Made sure they got water. And, but I didn't freak out about them scorching in the sun. I went in and let them get a lot of morning sun. Those ones did a lot better. All right, time to go as always. And most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.